Hey, Wood Turners, I'm Captain Eddie Castle, and welcome to the shop. Yeah, look, glad you locked the gate when you came in. Them dog toys, hell with the neighborhood. Uh, raising hell with the neighborhood. I got to raise hell with somebody. I got this picture, and I hope you can see it. This was from Jim Sookie. Now, Jim sent this to me. I don't think I have a lot to say about the baldness or the wood or whatever, but, hey, I would have done a picture like that if I had a chance to make that many shavings. Do you? Well, let's get out there and make some shavings. I got a couple of tips, a couple of hints, an idea too about hold something. Here's the bottom line. If you can hold it, you can probably turn it. If you can turn it, you make art out of it. You make art out of it, people will love it. People will love it, then you're doing a good thing. And it's Christmas time, you should do that anyway. Heck, I've had Christmas music going in the shop all day today. I'm so overwhelmed. It's unbelievable. But, hey, all you got to do now is stick around and watch. And this time it's right there, right here. See that watch? You got to watch the thing right there. Hey, so you don't, you know, I don't, I, I, the thing from Jim, that's really nice. I get a lot of stuff from Wood Turners. We're a good family. We're like family you like to talk to. And we help a lot of folks out with things. Guys called and wrote and asked me about my ornament challenge for the year. How are you going to do Christmas ornament challenge for the year? Well, a lot of other people do them, and they do them really nice. I'm thinking about doing it, but not for Christmas. Just an ornament challenge. I need some comments. Send me back something, and I'll use you as a scapegoat when it doesn't work out right. Okay? Another question was, how do I get involved in Freedom Pens? If you want to turn Freedom Pens for the troops, all you have to do is send me a note to captainmedicastellan at gmail.com. No other way. No messages, special, captainmedicastellan at, at gmail.com. Just like it says there. And I'll send you the information on how to become a Freedom Pen Turner. And a guy called together there and said, what's a good start of late? I had, I, I, it must have been his morning to make my day. Really. Uh, what's a good start of late? It's a thing that sits in your bench and it spins wood around in front of you and you can turn something out of it. Let's go all the way to the basics. It can be treadle, treadle driven with a belt, a stretch cord. It can be driven by any power whatsoever. Anything. You can do steam if you choose. It doesn't have to have a variable speed motor or anything electric, anything eccentric about it. The art comes from here, not from there. The art comes out of these things. And you've got these, and you've got it in air. And if you can do that, what's a good start of life? Now, you're going to say, that's a, I was being hokey. Why don't I get a brand name? All right, I'm going to tell you, the Jet 1014, Jet 1014, 1014, is probably the best starter of life around. But, you know I was going to qualify that. There are about a hundred knockoffs from Harbor Freight to Jet Tools to Craft Supplies to Excalibur to Goliath to right on down the line. All these people are making a knockoff of the Jet 10 to 1014 lathe. That means it throws 10 inches vertical, maximum 10 inches, 14 inches long. It's a mini lathe, M I N I lathe. It's a good starter lathe. It really is. Nothing wrong with starting with a bowl lathe, which has got a longer bed and 12 inch choke. Uh, a throat on it, or stepping up to one of the other brands. Watch what you buy. Uh, this is not, I'm not speaking of wisdom, I'm speaking of experience. At one time outside my shop under Kennedy, I had five lathes. Five lathes out there. I had a Jet, a Milwaukee, uh, a Craftsman, a um, Powermatic and another Powermatic all sitting out there. I wasn't turning on them. People had given them to me to get the other turners. I brought them in, worked on them, got them fixed up and all this, and then I gave them away. Unfortunately, I can't do that right now physically, but it was very enjoyable to get a lathe in here that somebody had in a, in a, in a family auction or whatever, and they had no use for it. So we just rebuilt it and gave it to you. So if you're looking for something, if it's going to be new or out of a disc discount center or something, 
take a close look at the Jet 1014. Try to mimic it. And you don't need a variable speed. You can buy it for 100 bucks. You can buy it at a variable speed motor. They put it on a whole bunch of different lathes. Guy coming today, he's got a Harbor Freight. Going to put this motor on it. Um, can you install a doorknob? Yeah. Okay, you can do that. Um, I've got a little project we're working on for you today. Um, and, and in that project, I had a few other things that came up on how to hold this. People have done these things and they've done them with videos that are miles long. And I'm pretty darn sure it's a simple process. So I want to play with this a little bit on making this bracelet. If it is a good process, well I'm going to include where you can get the parts at and then give you some recommendations and then give you some ideas and then tell you where I screwed up at. Yeah, that we'll keep the camera running, we'll show you how it screwed up. Um, and I, I was looking at my note here. I think that's it. Except I had a guy last week, a, a good friend. He's become a good friend. He's our USPS, United States Postal Service representative, and said, by the way, postal rates are going to go up on the 1st of, Gen 1st of December, uh, January. Well, folks, as long as we can hold it where we're holding it right now, we're not going to go with it. We're going to keep the rates the same. I've tried FedEx, I've tried UPS, I've tried the snail, tried anything. I found that what I can get consistently is UP, United States Postal Service, regular mail. Number one, I can do it seven days a week. Number two, I don't get attitude when you go there. And number three, it's reasonably cost. So I've had guys say, can I get next day stuff? Order it yesterday, then you got it next day. Okay? All right, I'm going to get into this. What are we going to do? We're going to do a bracelet. Now, doing this bracelet, and I hope my camera zooms in right today, we're going to start with this. See this? This is a bracelet insert. It comes in two parts. If it comes to three, you broke it. All right. it comes in two parts. They're machined stainless steel, 308, I believe, and they snap together. You didn't hit a click because they're just machined that fine. All right. That's a stainless steel ring. This is a 2 and 3 eighths. And there's not a way in this world I'm going to get my hand into a 2 and 3 eighths. But it fits my bride's hand very nicely. So before you start making them, if you're going to order the parts, go out and make something the size that they have available. You know, and then ask them to put it, sand it. Don't make it too thick. Put some oil on it to finish it. So she can slip her dainty little hand in there. And the Shatton's not meat, meat hog like my, not mine. I have to, they got big hands, then you'll know you need to go up a size. If they're a faint little thing, then you need to go down a size. But it's jewelry. It's bling. All right? That's what we're talking about. So we're going to do that using this ring. There's videos all over about how to do this. And they use a lot of sophisticated stuff. I want to use anything sophisticated. I want to go as plain and simple as I can be. But there are limits. If I go way too simple, I'll lose you. So I'm going to try to keep it reasonable. I'm going to go to it right now. You can see these. These are my, or this is, my jumbo jaws on my one-way revolving center. Boy, I'm really screwed up. I'm sorry. This is when you wish you had the backup things. Mm -hmm. Backup. These jumbo jaws are mounted on my one-way stronghold chuck. See how that correction came in? And I've got a three-quarter inch plywood face bolted onto them that I've got through a wing nut and a carriage bolt. And it's not a hard thing to do. You cut a circle out, you square, you square it up to your thing, you bolt it on there, and it works really well for holding the piece. What piece? Well, in a minute I'm going to move the camera and show you that. This can be no simpler than rebuilding the incorporator on my weed eater. What, what are we talking about? You see, I had a weed eater one under water got wet. The guy at the auto parts at the supply store said you can do a carburetor kit for 10 bucks or you can do a carburetor for $60. So cheap me, I took the carburetor kit. I didn't watch the video on my small engine shop to tell me don't put carburetor cleaner in it. I melted all the crap off. I melted all the parts off. So then I found that if you research that model, EMS 20 or 320, 
and that carburetor and it's got something 70 on it and this and that I bought it on Amazon.com with my prime shipping and the first time I ever saw a prime truck drive by today they did right around the corner but I never knew them to do deliveries got that fifteen dollars and sixty three cents I cleaned it off put it on there and I'm not an awesome automotive mechanic I cleaned it off, put it in there, thought I made a few mistakes, pulled the handle, and then was totally shocked. No, not mm, shocked. Shocked. It was running. One pull. Full power. Everything right. It's amazing. And I learned how to do it, how to put it all together. I watched the YouTube video on it. So watch this one. I got something to show you. Now, if you're going to do something like this and you want the bling, the wood to show and stand out. Pick a good piece of wood. This might not be the best, but this has been sitting on the floor down there since before I had my stroke. So I think it's dry. It's been down there about five years. And uh, I cut some wafers out of it. And I, I think I cut them three and a half inches, no, four inches across. Yeah, four inches across. And then I took it on the bandsaw, just made a loop out of it. It's Sawing down on one side, sawing down on the other side, so it's not gorgeous, but it's useful. Uh, it's got good color to it. I'm going to hold it in these jaws. Now, you see the plywood backing on these jaws? Now, I had something else bolted on here that I used this for because these have a little bit of give, not a lot. And I see where it's giving at, so maybe before we crank it up, we'll tighten it up a little bit. In fact, you know what? We're going to do that right now. I took it off and checked them, and it was just a little bit of slop in the mechanism. But I can tighten it down and get it going right. We're going to do that. And i got to be careful about the safety stuff with you guys. Thank you. Thank you. I did want a, a piece a couple of weeks ago with bottle stoppers with Ronnie Benetta. And we were at his shop, and I forgot my smock. So I put Ronnie's. He's got a brand new XXX, XXX like 9X's and then an L jacket and uh, I put his on I like the way it felt you watched me you watched me you saw that the sleeves are long and I was reaching over the lathe to get my hand behind it to do a finger rest I should have reached over I should have reached under and I should have had my hand in a better position it was on somebody else's machine gotta learn on that and also didn't think about what you're watching you're watching me make mistakes. I don't want to make mistakes. I want to show you how to do it right. Even if you think it's wrong and there's a guy out there from East Jabib that's showing you how to do it faster and easier, I want to show you how to do it safer. So with that, we're going to crank up, spin this a little bit and put a depression. See, they're open about a quarter, three-eighths of an inch right here. I'm going to put a depression right there in the middle. And then I'm going to grab this and start the turning. Gotta fire up the old Kanakin every year. Before I get started, no bling, no jewelry, watch rings, safety glasses, shields up. Shield up. Using the tool that some folks would call a B-Dan. It's just a flat nose scraper. You see that shape? It's all this. And I'm gonna use that to cut this hole because it's easy to control. You might need to move. Again, jumbo jaws, speeds about a thousand RPMs. See it's playing around me a little bit now, even my converter worked on a little bit. Get that speed right, then I'm going to take this tool and knock it out. Shields up. Why? I want you to look at this. I gotta find
find the right button as long as just turn it off. I'm making a recess. And the recess is to hold this piece of wood. Now, I've got a line drawn on there where I can go to. You see that line? Yeah. That's where I should go to. That way, this block that I cut will fit in there and I can hold it. The depth, the depth of recess is going to be very close to... What did I do with the ring? Very close to that dimension of the width. So I'm almost at the exact depth. And I'll explain that more as we go along. But that's... Right now, I'm about 3 eighths of an inch down. Then on a hanger... Crank it back up. All right, already. Okay. Yes, indeed. We did that depression. See the little depression in there? All right. About three eighths of an inch deep. That will work for this. I'm going to put the block in, and then I'm going to turn the handle, the squeaky handle, and I'm going to tighten it up. Now, what am I doing? I'm getting it ready to face off a good side. Because I have saw cuts here and saw cuts there, and I want to face it off. I want to do it with a ball gouge. Why? I can also do it with a scraper. A um, I'm, I'm looking at it here. I probably I could even take my roughing gouge where I got to sharpen and make those passes and get that thing smooth. I could take a ball gouge and I could take that scraper again, and I could take a carbide tool and do it. A lot of things that you can use. It's not special equipment, okay? It'll work. Shield down. I'm going to let so I can talk to you clearly. I'm going to present the tool and I'm going to have it the food almost vertical. It's going to give me a little bit of cut, very little. See it? Then I'm going to roll the tool around and grease the cut. What happened was I went from an install initiating the cut to planing the cut and this is slick. Now I didn't take a great piece of what I told you it's kind of soft but I can work with it but now I've got the side faced off. Now what I could do right now is take a scraper clean it up or sand it or whatever that's not the next step. The next step is I'm flipping around and work on the thickness. Now you might ask why did I do this doofy thing with the, the jaws? All right, I got a block of wood and it's not sized, it's just a block of wood. And it could be stabilized, it could be a burl, it could be whatever you want. But how do you hold it? Well, this eliminates a lot of my holding problems. You see that? I'm turning to a true circle, because I locked it down to be a good, good circle. I just can't talk yet. And then I'm able to take my tools and do a lot of work on this. And if I hit something, I'm going to hit something wood. I'm not going to hit my chuck. I'm not going to hit my chuck jaws. I'm going to hit a piece of wood. And the beauty is I need to get down to roughly that thickness right here. You can see it? That thickness. And I want to take my, cal my caliper, do it, and then I can go up here and I'll, well, stick around. I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to do this again because I hit the off button instead of zoom button. Go back to the 3 8 couch because I'm comfortable with it. I like this tool from D-Way Tools. Shields up.
this was to get the right thickness. The thickness of this, this piece should be the same as the ring. So I'm eyeballing it. How's that work? All right, working out right so far. Let's see what happens. I guessed at it, got it run down. I am so on the money. It's, it's, I'm so good, it's awesome. Damn, I got lucky. Oh, I mean, I bought it's looking good. Whew. Wife just came out and found out I fixed the weed eater. Now she asked me, well, I'm not out weed eating in the garden. Because it's December. It's almost Christmas time. Weed eat next week. Put it back in. See how easy it was to take it out and rechuck it and reset it? Now it's running back true again. Uh, true enough to where I can do the next step. The next step is I'm going to flatten this out a little bit. Then I'm going to cut the ring to fit. I'm going to cut so that I can do this. This fits in there. Got it? Got it. The pros and cons. Because I have to give all those to you. This is so soft. I really need to find a better piece of wood to do this out of. But now it's become a challenge. I'm going to kick its butt. Um, because it's so soft, it's going to be a little crumbly and a little hard to work with. I'm going to use sharper tools, and I don't have a problem with, I'm going to get right now going my 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 uh, party tool. I want to just go through and knock some burrs off and put a new burr back on front. Now that just sharpened up that tip a little bit. Simple move. No grinder, nothing else. Then I can go ahead and make the ring this ring fit that ring. You do it, little bitty steps, like eating an elephant, a little bite at a time. Went back to that, I want to call it a B-Dam, but it's not. To clean up the hole a little bit. And I'm close, 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 close. Now, put the clock on this thing. We probably spent three minutes, magnet there, about three minutes turning this thing out. It's a set of jaws that, my, my normal jaws, and I'm going to put the ring in so the ring fits into the piece. And then I'm going to bring the back up, put them together, and they're both together. The rings put together, and you got to see this, match the thickness of the wood. You can't see that, can you? Oh, well, I guess I'm holding it wrong. But, now I've got a true inside dimension, I've got a rough outside dimension, and I'm getting ready to put it together. The problem with this project is, and it's not a real problem, but part of this project is, I'm going to glue this up, clamp it, and let it sit tonight. Tomorrow I'm going to clean it up and turn out the top half. That's where we're going to get back to the set. Okay? So, now it's to the glue. That's as much fun as watching grass grow or paint dry. I have basic turning 101 done on this. I'm going to take the two rings, put it on a piece, and check to make sure that when I bring it together, that it'll match up and be the right thickness. Now, if I'm a little bit off on the thickness, I'm a little bit of fuzz off on the thickness, I can put it back in and sand it down a little bit on the face to get it back in here. I'm going to glue it together using the 15-minute epoxy from Penn State Industries. My favorite epoxy of all time. It really works good, and with 15 minutes setup time, I think it's called 15 minutes, it's a long-term setup, not the instant. Uh, I got time to work it, put it together, and put two little clamps on it and all that. So, I want to do that right now. Got to finalize some things with you here. The epoxy is going to cure overnight. Epoxy doesn't dry, it cures. All right, it's a chemical mix. I've got it down the way. I don't have any expansion, any, any give side to side, front to back, whatever. I got a little bitty bitty play in the, the, the wood fit. Little bitty bitty play. I'm talking about it. Never mind. 
and uh, I need that to get the epoxy in. Then I'm going to put a couple of snap clamps or spring clamps on it to hold it together, set it off and let it go. Then tomorrow, when I crank this thing back up again, I'm going to do another video. I'll show you how I'll clean off all the epoxy off this, stain the steel, and then how I'm going to hold it. What I'm trying to show you is you don't need any fancy gear. What I used, I used a parting tool, a bead end tool, and a bowl gouge. That's it. I probably could have got around without that, but by using my radius square cutter, square cutter, and my bowl gouge again, my uh, parting tool again, and get the same thing accomplished. No exotic equipment. And wait till you see how we hold it. We're going to hold it so dumb it's silly. Yeah. Think you're going to like this. I'm Captain Eddie Castellan. I'm in a shop. I'm making shavings. Hope you get back to me. Will that go with my... No, it won't even go. My daddy was a milkman. As I he said, I had two quart hands. I could grab two quart bottles. Bottles. That's when milk was in bottles. Two quart bottles and carry them like that. That was a that was a milestone. Milk in bottles. Wow.